Joey G's audio channel. Bullshit. Bullshit channel, but it's fun. So, hey guys, I'm in Mexico City with Ernesto, who, who owns uh, Roma Records. This place is awesome. The prices here are right in line with what I buy in the U.S. So, nothing is overpriced. And just shooting this video right now, I'm seeing more stuff that I can probably gonna buy. And he's got everything here. You name it, he's got it. And if you can't get it, he'll order it for you. So I told him I'll be back because it's a one hour, uh, one hour bus ride here. Okay. So again, bye for now from Mexico City. The tour continues. Oh yeah, a mobile fidelity. Don't forget, we're MoFi guys. I forgot my t-shirt, my final DSD forever. Yeah, no, 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 man, I, I like this, I like this story. Thanks a lot, yeah. it's yours. <laughs>
whenever you're buying records and LPs, whether it's in Europe or it's in Mexico or s further south, you know, Central America, south, they're going to get hit with taxes and import fees, right? Well, customers going to have to, you know, basically pay that, right? On t and, and, of course, the record store owner has to make his nut too, right? So it's going to be a little more expensive. I mean, there's always the argument, well, I can go buy it in the U.S. for $35. Why the fuck am I paying you almost 50 for it? Well, dumbass, man's got to pay his rent. He's got to pay the import fees. He's got to pay the taxes, right? So if you don't like his prices, get on a fucking plane and go to the U.S. and buy your vinyl and come back and fine, whatever. Or do you just go down to Ernesto's store or Juan's store over at Black Market Records and they've got some cool stuff there. And then Retroactive um, Records too. Um, that's I'm going to get to that in a minute. But anyways, let's start with... Uh, Ernesto store. So I bought Bob Marley Legend. This is the Abbey Road uh, reissue. Um, these were pressed in Germany, not in Jamaica. Um, I've heard some f some funky stories about the Jamaican pressings, but whatever. So yeah, I know a few videos ago I said I wasn't going to buy any more vinyl, but you know, when in Rome or Mexico City, you know, whatever. This sounds really good though. You know, and, you know, I'm not a huge Bob Marley fan, but the Legend one, you know, for me, that, that's got everything that I want to listen on it. So that was one thing that I got from um, Roma Records. Another one was, I know this is, this is the Mono Milestones. I could listen to the stereo version on Amazon HD, right? And, yeah, 750 pesos for this, so, yeah, I paid a little more than what you normally would here, and this is the Columbia pressing. This isn't the, uh, well, it's it's RTI pressed, right? But it's, uh, you know, but it sounds good. It's a mono pressing. I'm, I'm happy with it. Didn't pay an arm and a leg for it. I think I paid 850 pesos for that. Um, this one I got over at Black Market Records. Um, that's uh, one that uh, owns that place. This was up on the... Uh, the, the the open racks, you know, the display racks. And I've always been a fan of the original Fleetwood Mac, so I figured, yeah, why not? And I think, what did I pay? Yeah, I paid 1,050 pesos for this. So, yeah, a little bit higher than what I probably would have been able to get it for here. And this is a, um, uh, what is that, Vinyl Me Please or whatever, pressing. Yeah, music on vinyl, that's it, music on vinyl. I don't know, there's so many of these club things, it's it's hard to keep up, but... There's Juan's logo there for Black Market Records. Pretty cool. And again, he's literally a 10-minute walk from Ernesto's store, and behind Juan's store is the Mark Levinson dealer. And I think he's also got Revel and all that stuff. This is another one that I got from um, Roma Records. This was a record store day special. Um, I never did get this on SACD. So this is probably the next best thing. Um, it's basically got the album on one LP and then a whole bunch of demo tracks on another LP. Haven't listened to the demo tracks yet, but you know, I'll get around to it. So there's that guy there. So yeah, I did spend a little bit more money than I was expecting to. I also saw Tangerine Dream Ricochet LP, like Repress. I didn't get it because I've got, got it on quad. This has nothing to do with the trip, but this was uh, waiting for me when I got back. So, yes, I did get the Aerosmith Greatest Hits. Um, actually, I got it for free because I had Best Buy uh, points and stuff. And if I didn't use it on August, uh, it was mid-August, I was going to lose uh, about $15 worth of credits. So I figured, you know, what the hell. I went through their LP listing and stuff like that, and I figured. So the long and short of this guy is... All the original, like the mid-70s stuff, which I prefer more than the MTV era stuff, sounds absolutely amazing. I mean, the Phantom Center sounds like it's coming right out of the, the Heresy 4, even though this is turned off. But the MTV era stuff, it, it still sounds like crap. You know, it was it was made for FM radio and car stereos and shit like that, but, you know, y y you can't put lipstick on a pig, sorry to tell you. And... And I did see these guys live in 2004 on the Hong Kong Bobo Tour. 
they're still the poor man's Rolling Stones, man. <laughs> that's that's what they were always called, and they still are, man. It was, it was. How can I say it? I had these great expectations, you know. We're at Hershey Stadium, you know, in Penn, Pennsylvania. There, they had the uh, the flyover, the 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 jets, and all that stuff was so cool. Um, Cheap Trick opened for them on that tour. Cheap Trick, I enjoyed more than Aerosmith that night. No shit. And it was like, yeah, they, they played more of the MTV era stuff and lesser of the 70s stuff that I prefer in the early 80s stuff. And it's the same thing with this. They, they put too much of the MTV era stuff on here. And there's a single LP version of this one, which has probably got less of a selection than this does. Um, but there are some sonic moments like the, you know, Jamie, Janie's got a gun, you know, that's got some quiet shit to it, but really, you know, LP side one and LP side two, there's, tr there's tracks missing on here. You know, I mean, I, I wish they would have put, uh, my big 10 inch on here. Um, another one was, um. Oh shit, it's off the walk this way album. Anyways, I can't think of it right now. But you look at LP three and four and half of LP side two and it's all the MTV era stuff. You know, so I, I don't know. I personally they should have done this as as a complete half, you know. Make side one and two from the seventies and early eighties and make sides three and four from the late eighties to the early nineties, you know right up to the Armageddon stuff and call it a day. They, they just a little bit too much on, and I knew the track listing was on here, but fuck it, it was free. So, whatever. Okay, next one. <laughs> 50 pesos. Yeah, I saw this in the bins, or maybe this would have been, would have been out on the open display. The cool thing is, even though I don't have the proper decoders for this, Using the uh, the Black Ice uh, F360 and setting up the back surrounds, you know, and having the dimension cranked like I like it. This sounds really good, and I just finished running it through my whole cleaning process with the spin clean and the fluid that I got from um, at London, and then the whole little bit of ice oil, you know, the, the I went, you know, my whole concoction there, and it actually worked this time. It didn't fuck up the LP. So, you know, you know, I gotta support my Browns, you know. And honestly, though, this the when I what caught my eye when I when I bought this was not just the Quadraphonic uh, label on it, but there's a version of Carol King's "You've Got a Friend" on here that's really good. Uh, Gordon Lightfoot's "If You Could Read My Mind." Yeah, there's the strings and the backup vocals, but when you've got it in the whole four channel setup with the f360 you know there's a, the, all the out of phase stuff is thrown to the back in phase stuff is in the front and it's it's pretty cool and i i haven't listened to side two yet i'm kind of scared to where side one has some cool stuff on here like how can you mend a broken heart that's the bg's um thing before they went all falsetto side two's got a version of we can work it out uh and some other stuff here, so I haven't really listened to that yet. I will, though, eventually. But yeah, this thing was... Once I cleaned it, man, it was mint. Um, next one is... <laughs> so I also bought this at Retroactive uh, Records. They're, you know... I had this. I got it for free when I was in my early... Mid-20s there, my... My dad's friend had a whole bunch of, uh, no, wait a minute, no, no, no. I got this at the flea market in Carlton Place in Ontario, the same place I got the CBS Master Sound Wish You Were Here LP, you know, the half-speed mastered, which was mint. And I also got the master disc half-speed mastered of Who's Next, um, which I think that's the one that wrecked my Shurv, uh M97HE which I later, you know, had the LP cleaned and, you know, was able to play it again on my, my Grado cartridge a few years later. Anyways, I got this thing. Yeah, 800 pesos is a little high, right? But again, mint condition. As soon as I cleaned them up, man, they're perfect. So, 
Yeah, that was the haul. You know, bought a little more than I should have. But anyways, what else happened while I was in Mexico City? Mm, couldn't really drink all week. And then when I could start drinking, it was on the last Saturday at my my niece's uh, baptism. And I, I love my scotch straight. But again, my stomach still wasn't 100%. And I couldn't drink this. I, I had a couple of drinks straight like I normally do. And it would burn my stomach. Like I just couldn't handle it. Like I was putting water in my fucking scotch. I've never done that. I hate putting ice in my scotch. You know, but now, yeah, this is the, actually, this is the first time I've had a drink now since last Sunday. I've been a good boy all week, you know, because I come back from Mexico City and I get my wife's cold. So, hey, you know. So, yeah, next time when I go, I'm going to do, a, hopefully I'll have a little more time and do a little more research, you know. And hopefully I can finally do a video in that Mark Levinson um, dealer store. And there's, there's a few other places in and around Mexico City that I wanted to check out. And, and I know there's some YouTubers down there too as well. I mean, I know them from their channel. And one gentleman did contact me about a year or so ago through the, through the YouTube channel. He said, yeah, man, you get to Mexico City, you know, send me an email, drop me a line, and, you know, we'll, we'll get together, right? And it didn't happen because, like I said, I didn't, uh, I wasn't feeling good, so... You know. Anyway, guys, that's the video. I've got one other thing to show you. Is Look what I got here. Meet Rocket, newest member of our family. He's a handful. Right, buddy? Yeah. Mm, happy still the alpha female, and she's in her big... Uh, uh, dog bed there, right, buddy? Yes, 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 yes. And he likes his tunes too, so he's good. He's good. Welcome to the family, buddy. Well, he's been here now for about a month. My son was looking after both of them while we were away. And yeah, okay, I'll I'll throw happy in the video too because. Got to give them both equal billing, right? Right, Rocket? Yes, Rocket. Ouch! Got to give them equal billing. Got to show one love, got to show the other one, right? Okay. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Um, again, if you haven't, like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers. Bye for now. All the best.